Hi folks, welcome to the Epic Aesthetic. You're watching High Intensity Training and this is vlog number 12. Today you're checking out the chest, shoulders, triceps and ab routine of my B split. So that's the second week um, where I switch up the exercises a little bit, but essentially it's hitting the same muscles. Um, so kicking off chest training with the pre-exhaust technique. So that's an isolation exercise followed by a compound movement targeting the same muscle belly. And um, some technique points with the dumbbell fly is a slight hitch or bend to the elbow. And just perform the bottom two thirds of the movement. If you're in the habit of lifting the dumbbells above your shoulders or, or above your face, you're essentially giving those chest fibers a break. And that makes the stroke inefficient. You're spending one third of the time resting the muscle when you really want to perform exercises in a manner that um, keeps the muscle under load and, and works it hard. And, and that just uses your time a lot more effectively. Um, so slight bend to the elbows, keep the elbows and hands slightly below um, the shoulders, sort of around the armpit level or a bit lower. And that's better for, for joint safety and joint health. And um, in my opinion, it'll, it'll target the upper chest a bit better and not over recruit the front delt, which this exercise um, unavoidably will do. But again, that little tweak can make it uh, a fair bit more effective. So complete a set of six to 10 reps to failure. And with an isolation exercise uh, with free weights, it's not the best time and place to do things like rest, pause and forced reps because the, the difficulty in coordinating the movement can often pose some dangers. So when you do rest, pause or negative only reps or, or forced reps with a partner, save it for the machine lifts. That way you're locked in a fixed path and you can just focus on pushing. Um, it's a lot more safer to do things this way. So incline hammer press. I aim for about three to five reps to failure and I'll often do some rest pause stuff here. But again, you're looking to improve on the first exercise, firstly and foremostly. If you get more reps each week in that first exercise, typically the second compound movement isn't gonna perform so well. It might hold steady. Sometimes it'll go backwards. Um, if it's improving by a fair bit, it's often a sign that you're either a beginner or you're not going to full fatigue in the first exercise. Um, that first exercise should be incredibly difficult and it should leave you in a position where we're getting extra reps or getting progress in the compound movement following it is, is very hard to do. So a good measure of progress to myself is when I take that first set to absolute failure and then it causes my secondary exercise to really underperform. It's a sign to me that I've really annihilated the muscle properly in the first exercise. So slight bend to the elbows I recommend here to um, keep the stress on the chest muscle and try and keep those elbows tracking below the front delt um, as long as you can and that's going to keep focus on the chest. Um, so the next exercise Doing side lateral raises, the weight was a little bit heavy and um, my performances during this routine weren't so impressive. There wasn't a whole lot of improvement, but I'd come off four 12 hour shifts at work and then I trained at 1.30 in the morning um, of the next day. So I was obviously incredibly tired. I was already fatigued from work and um, it's not something I recommend, but in order to film these videos, um, I really need to get in the gym I think when people aren't there I think nothing's more awkward than filming um, people whilst they're walking uh, around you and and they don't want to be seen on camera so come in nice and late to avoid that issue and um, it also means I can get through my workout a lot quicker when I don't have to work for machines wait for machines but again it is affecting my performance but basically I'll get a video of every split and every workout and then I'll go back to training at normal times and um, I'll train, train at normal times after work as well to um, make sure I keep gaining. But we all have to make sacrifices, especially if we want to get our content onto the interwebs. So a set of six to 10 to failure and I use a 222 form. So essentially it's very hard to do this exercise with 4-4 um, and it's just something I've found makes the exercise more effective and, and keeps you progressing a little bit faster. 
um, just because the effective part of that, that stroke is only really at the top. Okay, so normally I'll do a extension and extension exercise for triceps, but because I've only done one pressing movement so far after a pre-exhaust, the triceps are still relatively fresh. They're essentially warmed up, so it's okay to use something like a dip, um, which will sort of use the chest and things a bit. Um, but again, it, it's it's personal preference, you know, play around with it, see what keeps progressing and um, go from there. But I always like to keep dips somewhere in the routine because they're, you know, a hell of a good mass builder. Um, and I like the machine dips over the um, free weight dips as well because I can just focus on pressing and, and, and not shifting my body around too much in order to um, cheat the movement. So I find a fixed position in this um, seated dip machine allows me to go to proper failure. But again, not much improvement this week because I was quite tired and training um, obscenely late. But, um, you know, I am going to, to what I'm capable of. I am going to failure. And um, as long as I get some good rest um, between here and next week, hopefully I'll yield some better progress. Otherwise, I might have to start adding some rest days. Um, so doing some rest pause here. I take about six breaths in between failure points. And essentially what that does, it, it allows my level of fatigue to determine how much rest I get. So, um, you know, if I wanted to slow down a little bit, I'll just breathe a little bit slower, etc. Um, so to finish off with, got the ab machine. Um, all the technique points here are pretty evident and I talked about them in the A split. So um, what I'd like to talk about now is... Um, Recently, I've been getting a lot of um, very positive feedback from the HIT community um, that have been contacting me through Facebook and through YouTube itself. And um, I just want to give a big shout out to you guys. It, it means a lot, um, especially when making this content for free in my own time, um, that someone out there is getting some benefit from it. And um, I'd just like to encourage you, um, keep sending the positive messages. And for the guys that are giving me technique points, um, although I consider myself close to the expert level, I'm humble enough to, to always accept um, little distinctions in, in lifting technique that are going to help me get better gains. So never be afraid to um, you know, express your opinion on my YouTube channel. If you think there's a better way I can perform an exercise or there's a way I can tweak an exercise to get better results, put it down there. Um, sometimes I might miss it, but often I will take it on board and I'll use it in the videos and, and I'll make some comments a, a, about how it went. So, um, so yeah, big shout out to you guys making comments and um, sending me PMs on Facebook um, that, that appreciate the content. So um, brings me a lot of a joy and happiness that, that people out there are starting to, um, you know, get something from these videos. Obviously, HIT training is very niche. We don't get a lot of coverage in the magazines um, and we don't get a lot of coverage on YouTube. You know, you've only got a handful of guys talking about it. Um, so it's really good that, um, you know, in our small niche, um, we're, we're spreading the word and, and getting some nice content out onto YouTube and hopefully we can um, recruit some new people. So a little bit of flex for free. Um, I'm still trying to find that elusive, perfect illumination point in the gym that perfect space where all the lighting and shadows line up to show you in, in bold definition. But um, I don't think I found it this week. So unfortunately, you just get to see me how I look in average lighting, which um, hurts the self-esteem a little. But as you can see, nice pump, one set per body part. You know, uh, it doesn't require 20 sets to grow. So um, let's try and show the lifting community out there that... Um, there are good ways to train that, that don't require you to spend six days a week in the gym. This workout only took 10 minutes of footage, including this flex for free. So, you know, that's a very short period of time in the gym. I mean, I'm in and out of there within 15 minutes, and I'm only doing this two to three times per week. So, um, breaks down a lot of myths. So, thanks for the guys following, liking, subscribing, and thanks for the PMs. Have a good day.